Hello everyone and welcome back to Mark Anthony's Music Picks. Today is episode 153 and for this episode I'm going to be doing the third installment of one of my favorite labels of all time which is Border Community. Border Community is one of those labels that has been a very emotional attachment for me since I began collecting and DJing. A lot of it has to do with playing these tracks with uh, some of my close friends back in the day. And I think another component of it too is the really, really nice cover art, which I've just, it's just always captured my heart. And in the previous two installments, I'm sure I've talked about this too, but I'm going to reference it again today because I just absolutely adore every, <laughs> everything about early border community. Uh, for the, the, the label, it has a, a very childlike uh, connotation to it. There, there's, there's something that makes me want to play these tracks around Christmas time. And I, I was able to correlate it to basically the same childlike feeling that you get when you're building up to Christmas as we are now with, with Two Days to Christmas and, and the sentiment of, of uh, maybe Christmas lights and seeing your family. The same feeling that I get right around the holidays is the same feeling that I get when I play my Border Community records. So I, I tend to play them in the winter time. Uh, there's just it's magic. It's pure magic. So for today, I have five records that I want to review with you, spanning mostly the early catalog. Although I have one from the the later phase of the catalog, and I hope you enjoy these picks, and I hope you enjoy your holiday too. My first pick for you is number three, and I would I would say that any real hardcore Border Community fans would say that this is a, a staple of the early catalog. This is the MFA appearing with the difference it makes. The MFA is an artist that, uh, it's actually a duo of artists that made Progressive House maybe from 2004 to 2006 and then recently resurrected on Trom appearing with I think one or two more singles just in the last year or two so if you were an MFA fan back in the day maybe check out what they put out on Trom you might like it uh, to me they've always been kind of like a I've always pictured them as being like kind of like nerdy progressive house producers uh, you're not gonna find MFA tracks that are like, I mean, I guess there, there might be a couple of them that are like a little bit clubby, but they're more, uh, they're more like eccentric and, and having connotations or, or ties back to, to glitch. So it, it's just more of, like I said, like kind of like, um, I picture for some reason, I picture the artists as being like science nerds or like, or really heavy into math for some reason. <laughs> like that's just the vibe I get from it. Uh, on the difference it makes, you'll hear just really, really classic, warm, early border community sounds. The vocal where the where the girl uh, sings, the difference it makes has uh, like kind of like a traditional border community vocoder. I think vocoder is the the element that's put on top of the vocal, and to me, it really just signifies the early BC sound. Border Community was known for being kind of eccentric, and I remember back in the day as the new releases were coming out, you never really knew what was going to come next. It was just 
a complete ball of suspense. James and James Holden running the label started in 2003 was starting to tire of his traditional club sounds and was willing to take chances on the label. So as you move through BC three, four, five, six, seven up to maybe 15 or 17, it was just like all bets are off. You never knew what was going to come out next. And whenever a new release did come, maybe on forums like Trans Addict, you would see people debating and bickering about whether or not it was good or whether they liked it. And I think that added to some of the, the frenzy back in the day. Um, here, you have a, pr a producer named Dextro that Man, I don't know if Dextro really ever appeared on anything else. There might be a couple of other Dextro releases from back in the day, but I certainly haven't seen anything new. I, you know, I'll admit I, I haven't gone through and like actually clicked through this catalog recently. But I think this appearance on Border Community as I think this is number seven is kind of like the highlight of this Dextro's career. Uh, the Do You Need Help has always had a, like a really laid back charm for me. I love the uh, the Balearic guitar in this and the reverb that's on the drums. Like <clears throat> if you listen to how the drums the drums hit in this, oddly, I'll, I'll admit this is really odd. It actually reminds me of the same drums that hit in Snoop Dogg's famous murder was the case track now obviously murder was the case is like a super dark hip-hop track as about as dark as you can get in hip-hop and this that's not the vibe here but the the way the drums hit with that like that like double or triple echo on it is it, it always for some reason like takes me back to that murder was the case i'm like oh that reminds me of that it's like the the element is the same but then brought forward with this Dextro track into a completely different vibe in a completely different realm. But here, this uh, this also shows off something that Border Community was doing early in their releases, which is uh, when they repressed it, they would do the kind of like fill in the fill in the blank, not colored version of it. If you got the original version of the early releases, it had the the blue and black, or I'm sorry, the the blue and green more traditional colors. So I only have the repress here, but in both cases, the sound is excellent, so it doesn't matter. Now, for this next release, I was actually debating on whether or not I wanted to talk about it for the episode because I try not to say too much negative about any given piece of music, but I don't think you can talk about this release here without having some mixed emotions and thoughts about it. So this is the Holden's The Idiots Are Winning. I bought the I bought the repress here which came out which has kind of like this rainbow splatter color to it. I'll pull that out and, and show it to you. So this is what the repress looks like. I think this came out in 2022, maybe 2021. And it's it's a really clean press. Absolutely absolutely no complaints here. For the, for this album, 
I I kind of like always hated it. And the, the only reason I'm saying that is because it's James Holden. He's famous now. And, you know, he can, he can kind of take it. If he ever saw this video by chance, I don't think he would really care that I said I, I hated the music. But I, I kind of do. I love I love the cover art, though. I love this like Monet crazy. Yeah, I don't know. Picasso, whatever this is, maybe like some kind of like Starry Night takeoff here. I I love the cover art. It's almost like I bought it just so that I could look at it visually. When I try to sit and listen through this, it's like I just I can't take it. <laughs> I can't take it. I know I'm supposed to think like that it that it's so cool and it's like everybody else loves it except me and I, I I've just I've just accepted my fate on that. But I guess I guess I don't hate it entirely. I, I just find it to be so jarring and so difficult to listen to that I don't maybe that's maybe that's what makes it really good art is the fact that it actually elicits that level of feeling <laughs> of feeling in me but there is relief the the one track here that that I actually do really like I, I don't hate the whole thing is uh 10101 it's it's really just got a completely unpredictable arrangement in it you can still hear traces of the old James Holden in the melodic elements that are cho that are chosen for it, and to me, I, it's like this album is like right when James was teetering on the edge, production-wise, of sanity and insanity. I'm not saying that James is crazy at all. I'm saying that his sound after this point got weirder and weirder and weirder, and there's still ties back to the '01 and '02 James Holden that. The people that listen to progressive and trance w would find adorable so it's like there's a little bit of old and a little bit of new and this is like right on the tipping point Going back to the beautiful Border Community cover art, I really want to showcase this as a segue into this record. We're now on Border Community number 15, and I have a freaking beautiful copy of Mistress Barbara's Barcelona. This is one of my favorite cover arts on the entire label. Just look, look at like, look at the darkness on this. This is only really paralleled in. It's dark design by the Lazy Fat People release, which has like the green and purple theme. But man, you can tell it's a dark and gloomy day in BC land for this one. And Mistress Barbara, who she, I think she, I think she's a techno producer. This is one of the last vinyls that she put out. If you go and look through her catalog on Discogs, you'll see tracks going back to the late '90s, and this is kind of where. She ended her her serious, um, you know, vinyl vinyl releases, and I, I think there's a few digital releases after this, but maybe her DJ career stopped after this too. I don't I I don't have any other Mistress Barber records. I don't have any other remixes by her, so I don't know a lot about her. But geez, oh man, what a way to cap off your production career by releasing something like this. If you listen to Barcelona really cool like kind of like bloopy hook in the track and some super moody some super moody like brooding sounds that kind of uh 
they 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 really match this this ominous look here. When you when you listen to the track, I think it's maybe like eight to nine minutes long. It has a really good arrangement to it, and the the bloop that you hear in the beginning kind of like drops out in the middle of the track and then is reintroduced reintroduced at the end when uh, when the the really like climbing never ending climbing elements kind of like hit their crescendo at the at the very end of the track. So um, I thought it was really one of the slickest like dark progressive maybe club oriented tracks that you can find in the Border Community catalog. Not a lot of them are like super clubby, but I think Barcelona is and a total winner. And now to cap off this episode, I'm going to go a little bit forward into the future. The, the Mistress Barba record that I was just talking about was released in 2007. And this one came out in 2011, which is kind of after I would say Border Community started to kind of like tail off and, and get into weirder territories that alienated a lot of its original fans. Uh, but this is not... Uh, I would say this is actually a strong release mixed in amongst other releases that you might not really feel like you need to have in your collection. This is Fairmont and his, uh, his EP called Valora. And the track that I'm featuring in this review is, is called Valora. And one thing I want to I say is that Border Community may be due to just costs probably just cost they decided to switch over to just these like little poster like inserts and a plain generic sleeve actually i think these came in a pvc sleeve initially and i probably just took the pvc sleeve and threw it out because i didn't want it to cloud and wreck the vinyl which they most certainly will do if, if you let them sit in there for more than even a few months uh, so bc cutting corners on their presentation, but not cutting corners on the sound. This is Fairmont, who is perfect for the Border Community label. If you look, he appears at least three or four times in the Border Community catalog over the years. Fairmont is Jake Fairley, who to me has always kind of been more of a songwriter than a track producer. So think of somebody like Matthew Deere that likes to mix maybe minimal and tech house vibes in with vocals. That's exactly what you're getting with Fairmont. Fairmont has a history of appearing on Trom and Echo Chord with some really interesting releases back in the day. I really like his old catalog from maybe 04 to 07. And here on Valora doing the, the typical Jake Fairley sound where he creates these really dark soundscapes that it's like, some really, really creative stuff. You could drop these in a club if you wanted to create a moody moment, but for me, they're more like home listening, transporting yourself to another reality.
right, I hope you enjoyed these five picks from the old Border Community Catalog. I hope you all have a happy and safe holiday out there. Please comment down below and let me know if any of these picks have inspired you or if you have any other similar recommendations. I'm always down to explore something that I may have overlooked. That's all for now. Take care.